What up, people? This your boy Vagabond here to give you my thoughts on Bleach Chapter 554. Now, I thought this was a very good chapter. I thought the pacing was okay. And I thought the setup of this chapter was very good. Because it really got me hyped for next week's chapter. Like, I can't wait for next week. But, um, let's talk about what happened this week. Now, in the beginning of this chapter, we got Hitsugaya. You know, he thinks he defeated King Dude. And he's just looking very exhausted. He's trying to walk towards Matsumoto to see where she's at. But he falls down to the ground. Pieces of his um, Bankai, the wing, starts to fall apart. And um, he has no energy left. So he's laying on the ground. I believe Basby, he's getting ready to go towards him. Because he's fucking laid out. And so... We switch over to the next scene, which was Juha Bak talking to Uru about how some of the captains that got their Bankai stolen, they now got them back. And then we switch over to the new Quincy. Quincy E, I believe she is. And her name is Bambietta. And this bitch, man, she's fucking feisty. Very feisty chick. She's actually, I don't know if this is a ability of hers or not. But she's just walking around and she like casually exploding shit up. Like there's one there's one panel where she just like she, you know moves her hand or finger and this building and shit where these Shimigari are sitting on fucking explodes. And then there's another panel where she lets out this loud this loud roar because you know like I said she's just this feisty ass attention seeker type chick. She lets out this loud roar and bam, another fucking explosion. Like, she just lets off a huge explosion. So, if you, you don't know where I'm getting at, if, her, if she's letter E, then that tells you right there she has some type of, type of explosion ability, probably. But, she realized that her Bankai is gone. As you know, she took um, Kumamoro's Bankai. So, she's anticipating him showing up. And she knows that Kumamura is not in a serate. But what do you know? This motherfucker just happily shows up. Bam. Pops up. Has a fucking helmet on his head now. Like a new helmet. I'm assuming he got that from that um that dog um that fucking dog or whatever he was talking to. And um I wanted to see that fucking um you know, I wanted to see what was going on between them. That little fight or whatever. Or what type of training he was gonna put him through. Because, you know, that was like, that was like, a, you know, a big character development moment for Saji. You know, I was really looking forward to that shit. So, I don't know if Kubo is going to totally skip it or show it in a flashback, maybe. Like, I don't know, but, hey, fuck it, man. So, he shows up. And then the next thing you know, he also has Shinji Haraku show up. And he's already in Shikai mode. So you already know his um Zanpakuto Sakanade. It got the whole fuck. He got um Bambietta. He's talking to Bambietta, and then why you know he's in Shikai already. She starts turning, looking dizzy as fuck, and she's really confused and shit. And as you know, Shinji's um Zanpakuto ability it has the ability to um you know and invert you know the world that you're in like so like. You look at him, you're looking at him upside down, and he's actually been training to the point where you talk to him, the words that he say to you, you know, are backwards. So, like, you know, are upside down, really. So, it's like, it almost sounds like gibberish and shit when he's talking to you. So, and he also tells her the fucking ability of his sound park toe, which I thought was stupid. But, you know, they always do that shit in shonen manga. So, it's like, what the fuck? So, he's talking to her, and then there's a one panel where you see it looks like he actually stabs her, where he did stab her, and then we switch back over to Juha Bak and Uduru, and Juha Bak is telling Uduru that he anticipated this long time ago, like he really, he anticipated that the Shinigami were going to come up with a plan to get the Bankai's back. So... He ain't worried about it. You know why he ain't worried about it? Because now he, he tells Uru that his stern Ritter 
are actually delighted. They're fucking, they're happy now that that um, Bankai, they don't have the Bankais no more. And as we see in the next panel, or the next scene, Bambietta, she goes holy for him, man. She tells him, Quincy Valstandig, or whatever you want to call it. But I know it's holy for him. Goes into a holy for him. And then she, she's telling Saji and them, she's like, yeah, man, thanks for getting this Bankai off of me. You know, this shit was holding back my holy form and shit. We couldn't do our holy forms because of this damn Bankai. So that's like a big reveal or a big note to, you know, keep inside of your head that these Bankais that they had were actually going holding them back. And as you see panels and shit, you see, you see the area where Soy Fong and BG9 were fighting. You see BG9 go holy form. You see the area where Hitugaya and Kane Du were fighting. Kane Du go on holy form. So people who thought that Kane Du was dead, well, he's not. And I don't know why you thought he was dead because you knew that was he knew he wasn't gonna die. We didn't see holy form. We didn't barely saw anything from him. So you knew he wasn't gonna die. So he goes holy form, breaks out of the ice cross. So he's holy forming up, and you see a big panel. And it's about seven holy crosses that they call them. You see all the holy forms. And you, so I'm, you know you guessing. And as you saw on that front page, you saw, um, who you call it? Um, what's that guy's name? Um, the guy that went against um, Biakwa. Him. So you, since he, you know, you saw on the uh, cover page. So I'm guessing he's holy form now. That little gay dude and shit that was f trying to fight with my Yuri. He probably went holy for him. And um and then there's another Quincy, the um Hash Vault. I'm assuming he's gonna go holy for him too once that barrier gets shut down or that barrier comes down from um Karaku. So it's on now, man. We got us a fucking fight happening. Now I know people are questioning, well, why what was the point of taking a fucking Bankai's in the first place? Well, shit, you got to look at it like this, man. This was a battle tactic. You know, it was a battle tactic to, hey, we're going to take the Bankais, and then we're going to try to use it on them and try to kill them. Now, if we can't kill them, oh, well, we still got the Bankais. So let's see what that, let's see what they come up with next. If the Shimigami can't come up with something to get the Bankais back, fuck it. We're going to try to beat them down. But if they do come up with something to get the Bankai's back, then it's like, okay, who gives a damn? Fuck it. We got our holy form to fall back on. So it was like, it was a no-lose situation with getting the Bankai's back. Like, you know, losing the Bankai's that, um, that, you know, the Quincy's took. Like, it was a no, it was a no-win situation. It was like, it was a, it was a win-win situation, I'll say. You know, because like, if they take, if, if the, um, Shimigami, or the captains that got their Bankai stolen, took them back. It's like, okay, so what? Now we got our holy forms back. But if they didn't take those, um, if they didn't have a way to take those Bankais back, then it's like, okay, we still got the upper hand on you. So, you know, now, you know, these they, these guys, some of them got their Bankais back. You know, Biakia, he still got his shit out there. And um Ju Bak, he still got old man Yama's um Bankai. And um I don't see how that's coming back to anybody because as the process, the way we saw the process go, somebody gotta touch that pill in order to get it back. But who knows though? Maybe there's a special pill of some sort out there. But um Yeah, that's about it, man. You know, this was a very good Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit you guy, man. Hit you guy in his fight with Kane, dude. I mean once again, it just shows you, man, like, this is why most people don't like Hitsugaya, or why most people don't hold Hitsugaya in their regards to, like, like, in a, you know, a way, a caring way to, like, actually care for him. Like, every fight that he bees in, man, it's, like, for nothing. Like, it really is. Like, this fight that he had with Kane, dude, was really for nothing, yo. It was really for nothing. Now somebody gotta come there and save his ass. Oh yeah, and at the end of the at the end of the chapter, Mayuri and Huara they were in the lab. 
Uraha gets a call, and it's from Ichigo. Now, I don't know what the fuck Ichigo want. I hope this ain't him trying to come back to Soul, you know, Soul, the Serate or whatever. Because, if that's the case, man, then what the fuck, yo? Like, did this nigga meet the Soul King? I mean, did we see him training those new Bankai's or whatever? Like, come on now. But, um, I ain't gonna assume too much. We gonna let the chat, we gonna let that play out. But, um, yeah. Here's a guy, um, you know, all his fights are basically for nothing. And that's why nobody likes him. That's why I don't like him because, all, like I said, his fights are for nothing. He doesn't sound like it. He, don't, he, looks, he looks cool. You know, I like his little Zanpak toe, the look of it. But that's it, man. But that's all I got for y'all today. I give this chapter 8 out of 10. Very good chapter. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, comment, and I'll holler.